bring us on the rails. We've got the forbidden forest confrontation with the Dark Lord. We've got, are you a wizard or a witch or what? We've got stopper death. Um, we're, we're, um, Severus has revealed that he can stop her death, and then in the last book we see how he does it. We have the Christmas revelation of the family in front of the mirror of Erised, and then in Goddard's Hollow. We have Voldemort killing a Hogwarts professor. A couple of them. There's two of us here, should we duck? Um, we've got abandoned stones, the Philosopher's Stone, the Resurrection Stone, we've got Harry's Resurrection, we've got the Neville Surprise and the Gryffindor Champion that the guys left behind. The first and the seventh book match up. That's, that's ten, there's close to fifty. Okay, in those two books. Then there's one four set where we see things that happen in four that resonate with what happens in one four and seven. We've got the parents appearing, and all of Andrew appearing, and they only appear in those three books. We've got the mirror in Dumbledore, the mirror of Erised, the bow glass, and the eye in the mirror. We've got the midnight center. In each of those three books, the dead center of each one of those books has Harry out somewhere at midnight underneath the invisibility cloak. Okay, he's at the midnight duel in the first book. He's at, uh, he's looking at the, at the dragons in the fourth book, and he is in Goddard's Hollow with Hermione in the last book. Um, those are the only books he does that. We have two plans and a maze. Harry has two big plans, and his, his fight through the, uh, the obstacles to get to the mirror of Erised in the first book. He has, um, the three trials of the Triwizard Tournament to include all the obstacles inside the maze. And we have uh, the invasion of the Ministry of Grievous in the last book and all the obstacles in the doors in the Battle of Hogwarts. And the maze, the, the obstacle course he runs, always includes uh, plants, brooms, mythical creatures, a logic test, and his being saved by his friend. <laughs> that doesn't appear in any of the other four books. So one, four, and seven are clearly linked. We also have, and most importantly, in those three books, we have sacred blood. We've got the unicorn in the first book, and Harry's being saved by the, the, the sacrificial love of his mother and, his, and her blood. In the goblet, we have black, the black mass, where the dark lord comes back to love, back to life, and the bond of blood is revealed. And then we have, in the last book, we, have, we find out what that means with Harry surviving and, and Lord Voldemort's undoing. Two. Something else. So we got the beginning and the end me. Now, oh, it does spin. Okay, good. <laughs> we got Tom Riddle. The connection between two and six is that they're about the Dark Lord. We find all about the Dark Lord in that book. But we also have other things that happen inside there. We've got the house elf at Pretty Drive hating his master, having a fit. We have a celebrity teacher wanting association with Harry. We have uh, Morgan and Burke's Burgess and Spine of the Malfoys. We have a light rival at Hogwarts, Snape, it's unpleasant readings. We've got a complex potion used to, to acquire necessary information. We've got the Weasleys appearing in response to an attack on a child. We've got room, a room no one can find that an enemy enters the school through. We've got the Harry Draco duel with a Snape spell. We've got Phoenix Song at the climax. We've got Cancel Exam. And again, jo Joyce Adele listed more than 50 parallels between those two books. And it's all in my book on this subject. <laughs> no, no, the other ring composition. <laughs> Dana White, you're just not going to be able to do I'm not going to do that. On to, on to the next one. Do we, have a, do we have a parallel analogy here with... Oops. Let's get that one back. There, there's Tom. There's good. There. We've got... The next two books are about serious Black. Okay, the opening is about a repressed danger, and uh, you know, Harry's repressed anger and violence at Aunt Marge and Dudley. Harry's attacked by the mentors in both books. There's a Bogart and a furniture piece. Serious attacks a lady in a painting. Trelawney has an authentic prophecy. <laughs> Tutorial lessons to learn high magic, high octane magic. We've got the, the Dada exams where Harry actually does pretty well. Then we've got the, the Hagrid and the, the crazy magical flying creatures that students and delight Harry. We've got Buckbeak and Grog that Hagrid needs help with. We have Harry, Harry, uh, Severus raised the story's end. In the first book, Severus comes unhinged to Harry, the prisoner, and, and Phoenix, Harry, comes unhinged to Severus, both about their feelings that, about Sirius Black and whether he should have lived or died. Harry uh, saves Sirius, Sirius saves Harry in those two books. Okay, so we see reverse echoes. And you can see the entire series works as a ring composition. 
It's a little more complicated than that, but we don't have time for that. Dog gone. But we also have, oh my goodness, every single book. Remember, the, the, the fourth characteristic of a ring composition is that there are ring compositions within the ring composition. And sure enough, every single novel that Joanne Rowling writes, Joanne Rowling writes, is a ring composition as well. Its opening chapter and its end chapters meet up. Its midpoint echoes and resonates with that opening and closing. And then the chapters are in parallel. Every single chapter points to a chapter on the opposite side of the book. Now, this was this morning's two hours. Um, we're not going to do that. Um, but just to get some of the more interesting you know, stuff, we've got the boy who lived with the vanishing glass. In that one, in the second chapter, we have a serpent coming through a glass, which is King James English for a mirror. And this snake is coming through the glass. The glass disappears or whatever. And at the end of the story, we have the heir of Slytherin trying to get into the glass. We have the midnight duel, which is the, the big turning point or whatever. All of these places, Harry has a miraculous survival. He meets Fluffy in, in chapter 9. I can't do this for every one of these things. But this, this is his, some of the greatest hits here. Um, in chapter 6, Harry, you know, Ron and Harry meet on the, on the train, the Hogwarts Express, and they share their you know, insecurities and misgivings and hopes and fears, whatever. The chapter opposite is at Christmas time when Ron and Harry sit down again in front of the mirror of Erised and again share their hopes and dreams and insecurities, which, which are always complementary and opposite. You know, Harry wants a family desperately. Ron wishes he could be known for himself rather than for his family. Chamber of Secrets. We have a similar thing. Well, first of all, Dobby is, only appears in the first, last, and middle chapters. The book's about Dobby. Surprise! Okay. Um, the, the middle chapters here, again, we have Ron and Harry on a big adventure. They're, they're late for school, and they get there, and they, they're near Fort Anglia, right? And where does the Fort Anglia appear again? in the chapter immediately opposite it, in the, in the circular meadow outside of Aragog's place. Oh. Wow. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. I mean, the easy one here is Moody saves Harry, and then he saves, he does the bouncing fair thing in chapter 13, and then he comes to the rescue again when Harry's on the staircase with uh, Severus and Filch looking after him. Gang's all here. The Quiz Blow Cup. We have all these characters. Ludo Bagman, uh, 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 not Moody, but Barty Crouch, Barty Crouch Jr. Uh, he's supposed to be there at least. And then the Penn Steve on the opposite side, we have the same characters. Ludo Bagman's on trial, Barty Crouch Jr. is on trial, and we have angry riches of wizards basically all there, you know, cheering for something. They cheer for Ludo Bagman. Justice has become a big game. And she shows that by showing those two in peril. The Quidditch World Cup and Harry's trip into the Wizarding Gap. In the Portkey Diggeries, in chapter 6, he takes the Portkey with, with Mr. Mr. Diggory and his son to the Quidditch World Cup. And in chapter 32, Harry and Cedric make a trip from the center of the maze to the little house and grave. Um, Prisoner of Azkaban. This really can take all day. Um, uh, I'm, 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 sorry, I'm just going to flip through these. Oh, here's, here's uh, the Order of the Phoenix. Sirius is closed curtains. Okay. <laughs> In the opening chapter, Sirius has a little problem with a deranged female relation, and he, he deals with it with a curtain. And in the parallel chapter, he meets a deranged female relative, and she deals with him by putting him through a curtain. <laughs> Wow. Think that was accidental? <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably my favorite is Harry makes a trip with Dumbledore at the beginning of Half Blood Prince, and they go out to meet Horace Slughorn. They wind in his house. Dumbledore has a lot to drink. They talk about Regulus Black. They talk about oh, there's dragons blood on the wall. Of all these stray ideas that happen inside his, his first interview with Horace Slughorn. And the chapter, which is immediately opposite it, Harry and Dumbledore are again alone, and they're on their big adventure into the cave of the Inferi. And Dumbledore, of course, has to splash his own blood on the wall there to get, to get in. 
yes, do a lot of drinking. Dumbledore has a little drinking issue there, you know. Um, Harry carries him out of his choice of drinking place, and now he's an Everton. But the, the kicker is, in the first thing, Dumbledore says to Harry, better have your wand out, Harry, just for security. He says, are we in danger? Not really, Harry. You are with me. And at the end, when Harry's trying to reassure him that everything's going to be okay, he's going to side operate him back to Hogsmeade. I don't know about you, but if Harry Potter tells me everything's okay, we're going to side operate him, I'm thinking maybe I'll just stay here with the inferior. <laughs> Send that night bus over here. <laughs> anyway, huh. Dumbledore, of course, reassures him with, I'm, I, I know that all is well, Harry, because I am with you. Um, usually voted in fan polls on Muggle Net and Leaky as one of the top ten moments in the series. Why does it have that, that special resonance? Because I think we have this resolution of conflict that we experience unconsciously. We've come to the center by having these opposites echo each other and suggest one another at the center of the circle. Telescopes and Trainers is another one. The, the, uh, chapter 3, Will and Won't. Harry, we, we, we meet Harry in Half-Blood Prince, and he's at, at the window sill, looking out his window, and his glasses are askew, and his mouth is open, which is exactly the position that Dumbledore is in, exactly the position Dumbledore is in at the foot of the astronomy tower in the chapter which is opposite. Wow. He's carrying his telescopes and trainers, um, his, his running shoes, which suggests all the action in the flight of the prince and the lightning struck towers. He's on the astronomy tower, so he has his telescope, he has his running shoes because he runs off the astronomy tower. All of these echoes happen because of that. And what is, in Will and Won't, Dumbledore um, talks to the uh, Dursleys in a pretty uh, un unpleasant fashion, but he does say to them, at least you offered refuge to this boy. And on the astronomy tower, his main purpose there is to offer to Draco that same kind of refuge and tells him that this has been done before. What he's referring to is that he can hide you like you could possibly expect, and that's what he did with Harry in the first thing. Of course, the Malfoy's are totally different than that. Um, and this goes on and on. Love potions. Uh, Hermione starts chapter 15 by saying, be very careful. Rose melda has got this wicked love potion she's trying to hit you with. And chapter 18, Ron decides to have a few of those chocolate creams. I mean, this, this, uh, this goes back and forth. When Harry, in, in The Unbreakable Vow, of course, Harry's at Slughorn's party, which is inside his office. Where does uh, Harry take Ron as soon as he has his, his love potion access? Goes right to the same office. Same location, same characters. Answer questions back and forth. I mean, rolling, I don't want to say anal retentive, but uh, OCD, I mean, is definitely <laughs> Um, you were here this morning, you didn't see this all laid out, every <laughs> single chapter laid out. Um, there isn't a chapter in the books. If you, if you say, what is this thing doing here? If you see it laid out on a ring, you'll know what purpose it serves in resolving these things on the backside. 